Hello, guys. Let's discuss three simple reaction types. The first one is combination reactions, or we can also call them synthesis reactions. In these cases, you have two or more substances on the reactant side, and you form one product. If we are talking about decomposition reactions, we have one reactant and we are forming two or more products. So it's basically the reverse of a combination reaction. And the third type is combustion reactions. In this case, our substance will react with oxygen gas, O2 gas, and if the substance that is reacting with oxygen is a hydrocarbon, meaning it only contains hydrogen and carbon atoms, the products are always CO2 and water. Okay, let's try to practice. So let's try to figure out the types of the following reaction. Let's look at the first reaction here. So, how many reactants do we have here? One, right? Ammonium chloride. This is the only reactant. How many products do we have? Two. So, this means that this is going to be a decomposition reaction as we start with one substance and we are forming two or more products. Okay, what about the second reaction? So how many reactants do we have here? Two, right? How many products do we have? Also two. So it doesn't fit the decomposition reaction and it's not a combination reaction. Well, we can see that one of our reactant is actually oxygen gas and the products are carbon dioxide and water. So what does this mean? This is going to mean that our reaction is actually a combustion reaction. Okay, I hope this makes sense. So let's take a look at the third example. How many reactants do we have? Two reactants. How many products do we form? One product only. So this fits the combination reaction, right? Where we had two reactants, one product. So this reaction is going to be a combination reaction. What about the next reaction? We start with one reactant and two products. What is this? This is a decomposition reaction. Okay, how about the last one? We have two reactants forming one product. Hmm? Well, this fits a combination reaction, so our reaction is indeed a combination reaction. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Let's take a look at some predictions in these reactions. So when we have a combination reaction, we can figure out what is the product if the reaction is between a metal and a non-metal. The product will depend on the charge on the metal and on the nonmetal. Okay, so in order to figure out these type of reactions, we have to remember that there are seven elements in nature that exist as diatomic molecules, meaning that they are going to exist as a molecule formed from two atoms. Those are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, okay? So, let's try to practice. Let's predict the product of the reaction between aluminum metal and chlorine gas. So, before we jump into figuring out the product of the reaction, let's try to write out the reaction. Is aluminum a diatomic molecule? Is it in this list? No, it is not, right? We know that aluminum is a metal. So aluminum will be as a metal, as a monoatomic metal, and a solid in this reaction. Okay, how about chlorine, chlorine gas? Is chlorine in our list of diatomic molecules? It is, right? It's right here. We know that this is a gas, so we are going to have Cl2 gas. 
Now, let's try to figure out what is the product. Well, the product only depends on the charge of the metal and the nonmetal. Remember, when we were trying to figure out uh, the formulas of different ionic compounds, we used exactly the same principle. So what would be a charge on an aluminum ion? So let's start with that aluminum. What would be the charge? In order to figure out, let's try to look at the periodic table. So here we have a periodic table. Where is aluminum? Did you find it? It's number 13, right? And this is a metal. Which noble gas is the closest to aluminum? These are the noble gases here. Which one is the closest to aluminum in number of electrons if it's neutral? Neon, right? So this means that aluminum would like to become neon, meaning that it's going to lose three electrons in order to have the same electron configuration as neon. So the charge on aluminum ions is always going to be three plus. Okay, what about chlorine? Where is chlorine in the periodic table? Did you find it? It is number 17, right? What is the noble gas closest to chlorine? It's argon number 18 so for chlorine to have the same electron configuration as argon it only needs to add another electron if it adds one electron we know that the charge on chlorine or chloride ion is going to be cl minus okay so now i just take the three down here this was a one down there, right? And this is going to give us aluminum Cl3. Okay, this is actually going to be a solid. And now we have the product, but we can also balance the equation. How would you balance it? Well, let's look at the number of atoms on each side. So we have aluminum and chlorine. How many aluminum atoms do we have on the reactant side? Only one, right? So this is one. How many chlorine atoms do we have on the reactant side? Two. Okay, let's look at the product side. So aluminum and chlorine. How many aluminum atoms do we have on the product side? One, right? How many chlorine atoms? Three. So in order to balance this, since I have an even odd situation, I would have to multiply uh, the odd part by two. So I'm going to multiply this by two. This is going to give me two aluminum atoms and two times three, six chlorine atoms, right? Okay, so now I have two aluminum atoms on the product side and one aluminum atom on the reactant side. So what do I do? Let's multiply the aluminum on the reactant side to make it two, right? Okay, so that, that works. Now, how to balance the chlorine atoms? I have two, I need to have six, so I can multiply this by three. And that is going to give me six. Okay, aluminum two, two, chlorine six, six. So I not only predicted my product, which is AlCl3, right? This is my product here, but I also wrote out the balanced chemical equation. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Just follow these steps, okay? The product always depends on the charge on the metal and on the nonmetal, not on the number of atoms in the reactants. All right, so how to do predictions in case of decomposition reactions? Well, when we have metal carbonates, okay, and they are heated, they are always going to produce CO2 and the metal oxide as a product. And the product, again, depends on the charge on the metal, okay? So let's try to do a practice. Let's predict the product of the decomposition reaction of calcium carbonate. Well, first, let's try to figure out what is the formula for calcium carbonate. 
So calcium. If we look at the periodic table, where is calcium? Did you find it? It's actually number 20, right? And this is an alkaline earth metal. What is the charge on all alkaline earth metals? It is 2 plus, right? So Ca2 plus. What is the formula for the carbonate ion? It is CO3 2 minus. So to find the formula for calcium carbonate, I need to take this two down there, this two right here. But I need the empirical formula. So from Ca2 CO3 2 times, I can actually make it simpler and have CaCO3. Okay, so that is the formula of calcium carbonate. Now let's try to figure out what is the product of the decomposition reaction. So we know that it's always going to produce CO2. So that's simple, CO2. And the other product is a metal oxide. So this means that in this case, the other product is going to be calcium oxide. Okay, so it's going to consist of calcium 2 plus and O2 minus, that is the oxide ion. Okay, so the two goes down here, the two goes down there, and then we can get the empirical formula, which is CaO. Okay, and we are done. Let's try to also balance the equation. How many calcium atoms do we have on the reactant side? One, right? How many on the... How many carbon atoms do we have? Also one. How many oxygen atoms? It's actually three. Okay. What about the product side? So calcium, how many calcium atoms do we have? One. How many carbon atoms do we have? Also one, right? It's just right there. And how many oxygen atoms do we have? one, two, and the third one is right here. So one calcium atom, one calcium atom, one carbon atom, one carbon atom, three oxygen atoms, three oxygen atoms. So actually we wrote out the balance equation. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Let's do another example and let's try to predict a combustion reaction. So we said that if the substance that is reacting with oxygen contains only carbon and hydrogen atoms or hydrogen, carbon and oxygen atoms, the products are always CO2 and water. So let's try to write the balanced chemical equation of the combustion reaction of ethanol. And here is the formula. So C2H5OH plus O2, right, this is our reactant, giving us always CO2 plus water, H2O. Okay, let's try to balance it. So let's start with carbon atoms. How many carbon atoms do we have on the reactant side? Two, right? So that's a two. Hydrogen atoms, how many do we have? Hmm. Count all of them. We have a five plus another one right here. So that's a total of six. How many oxygen atoms do we have? Hmm? We have one here and two more there. So that's three oxygen atoms. Okay, let's move on to the product side. How many carbon atoms do we have? Only one, right? How many hydrogen atoms do we have? Hmm? Two down here from the water. How many oxygen atoms do we have? We have two in CO2 and one in water, so that is going to give us a total of three oxygen atoms. Okay, is my reaction balanced? 
No, it's not, right? So here on the reactant side, I have two carbon atoms. On the product side, I have only one. So let's multiply CO2 by 2, which is going to give me two carbon atoms, but it will also change the number of oxygen atoms. So in case of oxygen, I, I'm going to have two atoms in CO2. So that's 2 times 2 plus the other oxygen atom from water, this is 5. So I have to replace it with a 5. All right, so my carbons are balanced, but my hydrogens are not, right? So I have six hydrogen atoms on the reactant side, but only two on the product side. So on the product side, I have to multiply by three water, right? So if I have that, I'm going to get six hydrogen atoms, but what happens to the number of oxygen atoms? Well, I still have 2 times 2 in CO2, plus I have 1 times 3. So that is going to give me a total of 7 oxygen atoms. All right, what happens now? So now I have 7 on the product side, but only 3 on the reactant side. Can I balance it? Oh, yes, I can, because I have only one oxygen atom in my ethanol, but I have two oxygen atoms here in O2. So what if I multiply O2 by 3? 3 times 2 is going to give me 6, plus this oxygen atom here, that is actually a total of 7. Okay, let's check our work. Two carbon atoms on both sides, two hydrogen atoms on both sides, and seven oxygen atoms on both sides. Okay, we balanced our chemical equation. I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video.